Hello, everyone. Uh, great presentation so far. I'm so happy to be here and present to you all. So uh, next slide, please. <laughs> so uh, we've spent a considerable amount of time on the call today just kind of introducing you to the technology that is artificial intelligence and also just giving you um, a very, very high level overview of the things that we can do in nursing education. Um, when we kind of started talking about this presentation, we really wanted to relate it to your faculty role. And as you all know, um, faculty have uh, uh, three major obligations. Um, the first one being the most important is teaching, and the second is discovery and uh, service uh, as the third. And so believe it or not, um, AI has many ways uh, that could assist you um, through these other areas of faculty responsibility. Um, the first thing that um, I, I would mention is that, you know, there is no evidence-based practice without discovery, right? So when we talk about, we teach evidence-based practice, we talk about evidence-based practice all the time in our own practice and in our classrooms and with our students and with even our patients and our colleagues. Um, but in order for us to implement uh, new evidence, we have to make or generate that new evidence or that new knowledge. And while there are plenty of researchers who are generating lots of new knowledge for us to implement into our clinical settings or into our practice as nurse educators, um, nursing education has that sort of obligation to enhance that knowledge base, right? Because one of the things we say all the time is, um, you know, there's really nothing with uh, nothing about us without us, right? So, um, nurse educators should be the ones leading and guiding the research that guides nursing education in practice, because I do view um, nurse. Uh, education as uh, a form of practice, right? It certainly is uh, a very valid form of practice. And so we do have this huge knowledge base um, telling us, you know, what's working in classrooms, what's not working in classrooms. And that's because of the efforts of researchers and nurse educators who engage in discovery. But I also understand that engaging in discovery can be challenging. And one of the main re reasons for that challenge is time. Our primary responsibility um, is educating the future nursing workforce. Um, we have several ethical obligations around that particular um, part of our practice. It's a significant part of our practice. Um, we have workforce shortages and challenges today, so there's even more pressure to make sure that we're teaching appropriately and putting out practice ready uh, clinicians. So time is a huge, um, a huge factor for us because sometimes we get out of our teaching roles only to realize that you know, we don't have any more time left at the end of the day or the end of the week. The other thing is resources. Um, not, all, not all schools uh, support their faculty um, with all of the resources that we need. And that a lot of times is just because there is a lack of funding. There is a, 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 a lot that happens in that arena, right? Um, the other thing is that sometimes um, research is either required or not required for faculty roles. Um, we see this particularly with associate degree educators. Um, our primary goal is teaching. Um, as much as we would like to engage in discovery, that can sometimes be challenging. And when there's nothing kind of hanging over our heads and our primary role is teaching, then that also adds to that barrier a little, a little bit as well. But I do want to point out um, how we can use AI to help us with this discovery process. And I want to make sure that we understand that, you know, discovery isn't always just conducting a or an experimental uh, interventional study, uh, randomized control trial. That's not always how discovery happens. In fact, one of the things I love to see at the Journal of Teaching and Learning and Nursing is literature reviews. We don't get them enough. Um, and, and, and literature reviews have an awesome way of pooling uh, uh, global data and then using that to develop new knowledge that leads and guides our practice. So, um, you know, Doing a formal literature review is uh, a part of discovery, um, and AI can help us with that. 
The other thing is when we're looking at a global perspective of the literature, right? We're looking at the literature because we're interested in a topic. We're interested in learning more. We're interested in learning the evidence-based trends on a topic. That in and of itself helps us generate more interest and more ideas to produce more research or more systemic li or literature reviews. Next slide, please. So um, one, of the, one of the things that I want to walk you through is how to get a high level overview of the literature, okay? So um, one of the things it does, right? So I'll give you a perfect example. Let's say you're interested in um, doing flipped classroom in your education and practice, right? And you're teaching and practice. And you hear a lot about flipped classroom, but then you really want to look at what the literature says. You want to know what the pitfalls are. You want to know what works, what doesn't work as you're planning to use that innovative strategy in your own practice. Um, part of doing that is getting that high level overview from the literature. So um, doing that, looking at that high level overview, it helps you to generate new ideas. It also helps you to find gaps that could maybe spawn a review or a research study later on. And so what can AI do to help in this area? Um, the one way that I would share um, is that I think a lot of people, nurse educators, shy away from uh, formal searching um, in the literature because we didn't go to school for library science and it's a difficult thing to do. And typically we engage with our medical librarians, but as you know, our schedules are busy. It's hard to connect with the librarian. Sometimes the librarian is not available when you need them to be. They spend a lot of time with students. So AI can really help you in that area. Um, the first thing that I would recommend is that you prompt a large language model. You can use any one that you want. Um, by the way, if you're interested in using ChatGPT's version 4, it is embedded in BARD, which is, a I believe, a Microsoft product or a Google product. It's Microsoft. Okay, I want to make sure I, I got that right. Um, so um, feel free to you know experiment with all of the available large language models that are out there and open access. What I suggest is that you prompt the language model with a well-developed PICO. I'm not going to go into detail on how to develop a, a PICO because as nurse educators, we probably teach this over and over to our students. And so you probably already know how to do that. And then you ask in the prompt, for a database specific syntax output, which is really interesting because a lot of people don't know how to combine search terms, mesh terms, abstract keyword terms, and Boolean phrases to get a really comprehensive search. Just me saying all those words makes me go, I hate that part of it, right? That's not my area, okay? That makes me nervous. ChatGPT or any large language model can really help you with that. The, the thing I tell people is review that output first. Usually when I ask it for a search strategy and I give it a well-developed um, PICO question, it shows me the key terms that it wants to use. It knows what the difference between a mesh term and a title abstract keyword, which is really great because I don't know the 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 difference all the time and it combines those so what I say for uh, nurse educators is read read that strategy look at it and read it does it make sense do the keywords kind of match your PICO question if it does then you can copy that syntax it's all put together for you and are and not but mesh terms keywords copy it and paste it and then put it directly into your database and then look at the search that you get, right? So go through and scour the articles that you get. Um, keep in mind that um, you want to go back to the large language model and ask it to refine your search if you need it to do that. And it will be able to do that because sometimes the searches can be a little more broad than what we're looking for. Then you would just screen the articles that come up in the database, save the ones you want. And then I would recommend using Research Rabbit, which is free to anyone with an institutional email address. It's a wonderful program. It really, really helps you get a high level overview. And so what happens is you only need to put one paper, but you can put 
30 papers that you collected in your search and research rabbit. And it is going to show you all the seminal papers and the current papers around that topic, which really gives you a nice visual high level overview of the topic that you're trying to look at. Next slide. Next, you're going to synthesize the literature. Now, that's the hard part because I start getting, you know, 40, 50 uh, articles on my topic, and I'm really interested and curious, and, and I just can't read it all. I don't have the time to read it all. But this is where the magic happens. This is where new ideas come from. This is where new knowledge is built. This is where new publications can happen. It can keep you updated on trending evidence. Now, how can AI help? We've been talking a lot about large language models. I want you to all know about some specific tools that will help you crit, um, summarize critical points of your collected body of knowledge that you use ChatGPT to help you get the search for. So once you have everything, your articles that you like, you can upload them into two open access tools, and there's way more than this, but you've really got to try it out. They're pretty self-explanatory. One is called Elicit, and one is called SciSpace. And then what happens is when you upload your papers into, the, into their website at no cost, it allows you to quickly extract data, and it uses AI to extract data. So I can look at what the major findings were of this paper. I can look and see the participants' characteristics in just a click of a button. And once I have it all laid out, I can download it into an Excel table. I can use that. I can bring that to my research council or my committee meeting and say, hey, this is what I learned about the flipped classroom. What do you all think? You know, here's what it's saying. Here's what it's not saying. Here's what the pitfall are. What do y'all think about building something new based on this? And that's really how we synthesize and how AI can help. Now, as always, you want to assess for accuracy when you're planning implementation strategies, specifically in um, clinical environments. Uh, next slide. So um, other ideas using uh, large, language, uh, large language models like ChatGPT or BARD or any of the other variety of products out there, um, just some ideas to be thinking about, areas that I have personally used them um, to help uh, with my own research and discovery. Um, it's, it's nice to just ask it, give me an idea of a certain topic or a certain area. What are your thoughts? See what it says, right? It can help generate further conversation and interest. Um, I love that I might already have a research question that I'm interested in or a PICO question. I can put it in there and say, help me refine this. Am I really missing anything? Am I really capturing everything? And it does a great job with that. It can also help you plan research or literature reviews. I once told it, help me um, develop a step-by-step -step timeline for a integrative review on whatever the topic was. And it just laid it all out for me, like two weeks of, you know, searching, two weeks of synthesizing, one week of writing, start here, start there. Sometimes I just need the structure. It also can help with methodology. Um, for example, you might, uh, again, uh, experience researchers only with this. Um, you want to check for accuracy, but you might have forgot what, um, uh, you know, how to really look at um, moderating versus mediating variables, and you might need a little reminder. You can ask it those kinds of things, and then you can look at it, and then you can say, oh, yeah, that makes sense. I remember that from school, or I can go check my textbook and make sure that's still accurate. You can get help with proposal developments. I like that I can just upload my paper in ChatGPT 4.0, and I can say, critique my proposal. Tell me what I'm missing. Tell me what I need to add or not add. Um, it's also great for writing and editing. Um, sometimes I write and put everything out there, and there's so much and I'm like, I know that I can't send this in for publication because, I, you know, I've gone on and on about a certain topic. I wanted to brain dump, basically, copying and pasting that into ChatGPT and saying, hey, help me condense this and, and not lose the quality of this work. Um, it can also improve clarity. Sometimes um, my topic sentences don't flow from one to the other because, again, I'm just writing rapidly and brain dumping and ChatGPT has been excellent for reeling me in. Next slide. Okay, 
slide, please. Okay. Oh, it's already there. Sorry. <laughs> so um, next, I just want to talk quickly and briefly about how AI can help with uh, one of our other big requirements. As faculty members, uh, we do a lot of service to our organization, to our college, to our programs, uh, mostly because of committee work and obligations. But some of the things I've used in my service work was um, getting help with committee work, like summarizing, editing, clarifying bylaws. Uh, if you're on that wonderful bylaws committee, you know that's tedious work. How can ChatGPT help you with that? Also, planning events like commencement, if you're on that commencement committee, that's a big job, right? Um, sometimes you have to quickly write this the introduction speech for the dean at commencement. Well, guess what? I have found that with some editing, ChatGPT is wonderful at those kinds of things. Um, biographies, I upload my CV and say, write me a paragraph biography. And it did a beautiful job because everybody wants a biography from, from us, right? From academics. And this is really a, a wonderful way because if you struggle talking about yourself in biographies the way I do, this is a wonderful way. Um, you can also ask it um, for ideas to engage alumni. Um, what kind of alumni events could I plan to engage alumni if you work in the alumni, you know, office, um, or you're on the alumni committee, um, you know, if you're on the simulation committee, what kind of ideas can you ask ChatGPT to help you improve your policies, um, help with writing student policies, you need help with that uniform policy, turn to ChatGPT to get some ideas. And again, uh, be sure to always uh, double check the outputs for accuracy.